Once you learn how to make your own press on nails, a whole world of possibilities, creativity, and potential income will open up for you. Nail products, however, can be expensive and the costs add up quickly. There are hundreds of brands and thousands of nail products on the market. It's hard to know what you really need when starting out. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the 10 products essential to start making and selling your own press on nails and let you in on some of my favorite brands and products. I've been running a press on nail shop for just over a year now. And since that time, I've amassed a pretty significant nail product collection. I've boiled that collection down to my 10 most reached for products, the key things you'll need when starting out. Though I snuck a bonus item in at the end, so stick around for that. Gloves and a mask. Safety is key. Uncured gels have monomers in them that can be soaked into your bloodstream if it makes contact with the skin, which over time can lead to allergies and irritation. So nitrile gloves are a huge tool and help keep you safe. If you are filing or buffing the nails, wear a mask. You do not want plastic in your lungs, and I'll leave it at that. Now on to the fun stuff. Nail tips. The base for any press on set starts with full cover nail tips. Nail tips come in many different shapes and length combinations, but don't feel like you need to get them all. I suggest considering what shape you like and wear, what do your friends wear, or your potential audience, and then build out from there. For me, short almond is the most popular shape I sell, but again, it really depends on who you're catering to. I have tried lots of different nail tip brands, and I mentioned this briefly in my last video, but to me, Apre has the best quality. They have designed them to be extra thin at the cuticle, making them look more natural once applied, and thicker near the tip, making them strong for wear. Nail stands. There are a few different kinds of nail stands on the market, but listen, this is a hot tip that took me six months to figure out. Not all nail stands are made equal. My favorite are these acrylic ones, and I'll show you why. Firstly, unlike the silver stands that you will most commonly see sold, acrylic stands have solid bases instead of hollow ones. And same goes for the stands themselves. The acrylic ones are solid versus the silver ones, which are hollow. More weight means more stability and less likely to tip over. Secondly, and very importantly, notice the difference in the width. Small nail sizes hardly fit on the silver ones, making them very difficult to paint. You'll find you'll paint the edges of the stand and have to file it off after. Save yourself the hassle and go with the acrylic stands. They can, however, be hard to find, so I've linked some in the description, similar to the ones that I am using. Most nail stands come with a tacky putty to attach the nail tip to the stand. I don't recommend using it as it's not very strong, but I'll show you later in this video how I more securely attach nail tips to the stands. File and buffer. A lot of nail tips come with these little plastic pieces on the ends, left over from manufacturing. I file them off before painting. Files are also great for removing minor imperfections and shaping the nail. Though judging by the thickness of the nails I'm wearing in this video, I wouldn't know anything about it. I was testing an encapsulating technique, but I'm still scared of my e-file, so we're just both gonna have to deal with looking at them. Similarly, I also prep the nails by buffing them with a buffing block, or more recently, chemically etching them. Buffers are also useful for creating a matte base for chrome or for art. Alcohol and acetone. Forget gel cleansers, you can literally make your own, better quality version with these two products. You're gonna want 80% alcohol or higher. I like getting 99% because then I'm not paying for water. I keep alcohol in this container on my desk and I'm constantly using it to wipe the inhibition layer or cleanse the tips. The same goes with acetone. Make sure it's 100% acetone or it will not be able to penetrate the gel. Acetone is also a great tool to clean brushes, remove cured gel, or thin out gel for art. Lint-free wipes. If you're anything like me, you're bound to make lots of mistakes and are gonna need to wipe something off the nail. If you've ever used gel before, you will know that dust and lint are your enemy. So I use lint-free wipes, but I do know some artists who just use ripped up pieces of paper towel, which seems to work for them. Though you will learn, nothing is truly lint-free until it's doused in alcohol or acetone. Gel. This can be one of the most overwhelming categories, so let's break it down. If you're going to be making nails for others, or to sell, I would suggest getting two or three different tones of nude gel. I like nude gels with a bit of translucency because I think it looks more natural, but that's an entirely personal preference. Secondly, and I'll get more into this in a different video, but starting with a white and black art gel can take you a long way in terms of painting designs or doing French tips. I've had these two for over a year, and you can tell that they are well loved. In terms of color, you could get a few of your favorite colors, or if you don't want to shell out hundreds of dollars for a full color set just yet, start with a quality red, blue, and yellow gel, and with a bit of mixing and some color theory, you can make pretty much any color, except for neons. Lastly, the final step in the press on making process is to top coat your nails. 
My recommendation is to start with a decent quality non-wipe top coat. This is one of my favorites, but here are some other ones that I also use. Top coats come in a wipe, non-wipe, matte, glossy, and in a variety of different viscosities, so I encourage you to do your own research because I feel like people have different favorites for their different needs. Brushes. These are four of my most reached for brushes, and with them, you can get away with pretty much doing any art. I recommend an oval gel brush, especially if you are purchasing potted gels over bottle gels, a long liner brush for doing French tips, stripes, or any steady lines, a thin liner brush for details, and a dotting tool. Nail Lamp Your lamp is what cures or polymerizes your gel, and might be one of the most important purchases you make when it comes to nails. I'm going to leave a link to the Nail Hub's recent video explaining things to consider when choosing a nail lamp. She's incredibly knowledgeable, and that video is worth your time. I bought this one when I first started out. It's worked great for me so far, but I'm certainly considering upgrading soon. Adhesion. You or your customers are going to need a way to adhere the finished press-ons to your nail. The two forms of adhesion available and safe for press-on nails are nail glue and nail tabs. This is my favorite nail glue. I've also linked it in the description. With proper application, nail glue can keep your nails on for two weeks or longer. It is a significantly longer hold than nail tabs. However, there are some people who lean towards using nail tabs as they might only want to wear their nails for a short period of time. I don't tend to use nail tabs to adhere my nails, but I do use them in place of the putty often provided with nail stands. I find they hold the nails on the stands way better than the putty, and if you listen closely, you can hear the difference. Bonus item, packaging. If you are selling or gifting your nails, you're going to need a way to package them, as you'd be hard pressed to just hand over a fistful of loose nails. The easiest and most cost effective way to package press on nails is to mount them with some double sided tape. Like many others, you can use these rolls, but I find they get stuck to everything, and I much prefer pre cut double sided tape for its uniformity and ease of use. Remember that unused tacky putty from our nail stands? Well, here's the perfect time to put it to good use. Put some on the end of a pen or a pencil and use it as a tool to place the nails onto the double-sided tape. Packaging has got to be one of the most satisfying parts of the process and also delivers some great ASMR. I want to emphasize that you don't need a fancy backing cart to package your nails. When I started out, I was using these cue cards and slowly progressed the design from there. One of the best press-on artists I know just tapes them to a piece of paper. What matters most is the quality of the nails, so don't stress too much about getting your branding perfect right away. Start by making quality nails and work on the rest later. I do get a lot of questions about these though, so keep an eye out on my website. I'm going to make editable design files of my backing cards available soon.